Hey guys, this is Steph Mischuk with KillerSites.com. In this podcast or videocast or screencast, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to be discussing the evolution of web design. And what this basically is about is about how every once in a while, web design goes through a major change. And this change actually is often reflected in an advancement in the technology. The importance of this video is for managers, web designers, aspiring web designers. The importance of this video is for them to recognize what the current trend is so that they can identify the skill sets that a modern web designer needs to know today in 2010 and probably for the next several years. Today, modern web design is actually in the middle of a shift from the, uh, from the last change. And the shift is moving into what I would call the Web 2.0 web designer. And that's somebody who not only understands the basic technology of the web, HTML, CSS, browsers, and so on, but this is usability and that kind of stuff. A Web 2.0 web designer has the understanding and ability to implement, to insert Web 2.0 capabilities into their web work. So we're talking uh, things like blogs and content management systems. We're talking about AJAX-enabled widgets, like you know things that will slide open and close. Like for instance, here's an example here. You see, we got little widgets that slide open and close here. This is basic, basic stuff using modern techniques. For instance, go to contact. We have a contact form. This is built, you know, everybody can build a form, but how do you process the form? It's very simple. PHP will process this form. Modern web designers should know how to implement these simple things because you're hard pressed these days to find a website where you're not going to need some uh, those kind of widgets, those kind of gadgets. For instance, they go to killer sites. Another quick example, little web 2.0 widgets, you know, very useful. And if you, as a web designer, have to go back and always uh, find a programmer to uh, install one of these scripts for you, uh, you're going to be in a major disadvantage versus, uh, you know, guys who actually embrace the new web. I'm not going to get into detail about the, this modern web designer. You have a good idea. I'll put out a new podcast on that specifically very soon. What I want to do is I want to go back and I want to show how in our recent history in web design, how this happened a couple of times before, just in case you're not convinced about this big shift and how important it is to move with the changes in the uh, web design world. So we're going to go way back, back to 19, uh, 1994, I guess. That's when I designed my very first web page. And in those days, you know, if you had a, an image in your web page, a color image, you're like a superstar. Most of the web at that time was non-commercial. Most of the web was uh, university websites, occasional hobby website. It was pretty much text only uh, maybe a couple images here and there, but it was, it was pretty ugly. Uh, and basically had a bunch of nerds who were involved. All these nerds, uh, very few, if any, had graphic design training. So the web was really an ugly, unusable place. And then there was a shift uh, with the book, uh, Creating Killer Websites, um, if I can get to it uh, about actually. You know, this book was actually, Killer Sites actually was founded on this, you know, to support this book initially. This book was uh, probably the best-selling book at its time. And basically, it helped, it helped usher in the first evolution of the web, where in this book, the author, David Seagal, he basically preached that you should, as a web designer, utilize design principles, you know, you know, alignment and good use of fonts, that kind of stuff in your web design work. And then he showed 
web designers how to hack this out because at the time the technology was really weak in that regard. So that was the first evolution of the web from being just a bunch of text only pages with the occasional image and it was just a giant mess to becoming a website, becoming a web world where design principles started to creep into web design and the web became a much more aesthetically pleasing place. At the same time, the beginnings of usability started hitting in the late 90s where they started talking about how sites should be usable, how information should be findable, and so on. And we saw a huge evolution. In those days, a web designer was either a geek who just decided they're going to start designing pages and threw out these monstrosities, you know, these ugly pages. And on the other hand, you had moonlighting graphic designers who saw that there was money in web design and so they started using things like Photoshop to uh, lay out pages and to slice them up and you know put them out there on the web. So that was the early stage. The web designer in those days was really uh, a nebulous hybrid type of thing. It wasn't a clearly defined profession. It was only defined by the work that you did but it wasn't really so defined by the technology because a web designer back then was much more about graphics than it was about web technology, believe it or not. 